Oh, also Delaney, I wanted to ask um, in terms of what we're going to do, it's just like we discussed last time, right? So you will start, you'll do an introduction of both of us. Yes. Um, I'll give us. We are starting now. Oh, sure. Good morning, everyone. I warmly welcome all of you to University of South Australia's webinar on business and law studies available for international students. When talking about University of South Australia, the university has ranked among top five in Australia for quality education and top 15 in Australia for teaching quality. In order to talk about business and law studies available at UNISA, we invited Ms. Emily Ruan, Coordinator, International Business Development, and Ms. Rahama Mashud, International Recruitment Officer from UNISA International, and Mr. Manu Singhal, International Recruitment Officer from UNISA International. Over to you, Rahama. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining the session, everyone. Um, so today we will be talking about a few of our programs and I will be running you through an introduction of University of South Australia and where we are located, which is Adelaide. Um, so to start off, let me start by uh, sharing my screen. Just give me a minute. There you go. And... Can I get a confirmation from you, Dilani, whether you can see the full view of my screen and not just the presenter view? Um, yeah, we can see. Perfect. Thank you so much. So like I said, welcome to the session of the University of South Australia, and we are located in Adelaide. So you might actually ask us the question, why South Australia, right? I would say, why not South Australia? Can you see the picture in the background? This is actually one of the beaches here in South Australia. So this is the Glenelg Beach and we do have a lot more beautiful beaches like this and some beautiful um, places where you can do hikes as well, just like in Sri Lanka. And we are also one of the most livable cities in um, basically in Australia. And we are ranked number four for this, right? So number four, as well as we are one of the most affordable cities to live in. So we actually are 12% more affordable than Sydney and up to 11% more affordable than Melbourne to actually live in. And to actually justify this, we I have given you a breakdown of what the cost of living looks like here in Adelaide. So I've given you on this screen the cost of living, just an estimate uh, per week in Australian dollars. And I've also given you um, what that might mean in Sri Lankan rupees or even in the Maldivian currency based on what our audience is looking like today. Um, so if you do a, a part-time job here in Adelaide, which you are allowed to do as an international student, I've also listed on the screen what kind of an income you can actually expect because you are able to work 24 hours per week and roughly you will be earning something like $21 uh, as minimum wage. This is per hour. And based on that calculation, you can see on the screen what might be your income from part-time work. So you can actually manage your cost of living just by doing part-time work. And that's why we are one of the most affordable cities to live in. Now, another reason to actually study in Adelaide is the additional year of post-study work, right? So after you have completed your two-year program, you actually um, can apply for your post-study work rights or your PSW visa. Um, and I've actually listed on the screen the number of years that you will be getting um, as your PSW. So if you do study in Adelaide as a bachelor student, you'll be eligible for three years. As a master's student, you'll be eligible for four years. And as a PhD student, you'll be eligible for five years of post-study work rights. So that's one year additional to all the other major cities because we are considered regional. On top of that, um, we also do have, um, the Australian government has actually announced that there will be two additional years of post-study work rights that students will be eligible for, but this is based on what area of study they're coming into. So you can do more information on that, or you can contact Educate for more information on the additional two years on top of this. 
Um, and if you do need any information about Adelaide, the official government website is Study Adelaide. You can go on to studyadelaide.com and get more information about Adelaide. And we also have information on part-time casual job opportunities on Study Adelaide. And you will need to visit the job shop page for this because we do get a lot of questions about why, um, why do I hear that there are not many job opportunities in Adelaide. So actually, we feel like that's a misconception and students can actually apply for jobs while they're in their home country. This could be in Maldives or in Sri Lanka. You don't necessarily have to be in Adelaide itself. Through the job shop, you can apply for these jobs while you're offshore before you come to Adelaide. Now, we do know Adelaide is great, right? Now, you're probably thinking, Yes, Adelaide is great, but why should I study at UniSA? Why not UniSA? We are one of the world's top young universities. We are ranked um, in the world's top 50, under 50, both under QS rankings and Times High Education rankings. So one of the top universities. And we are also number one in the whole of Australia for graduate employability. So most of our graduates, after completion of their program, actually do end up getting jobs and we are number one in Australia for that. We are also within the top 10 in Australia for graduate skills. And to give you an idea about the size of the University of South Australia, we actually are a public university or a state university and we are the biggest public university in South Australia in terms of student numbers. So we currently have about 37,500 students studying with us, out of which about 20% are international students coming from over 80 countries. We teach over 200 degrees, so we will not be touching on all the programs today. We will only be touching on some of the programs and mainly focusing on business today. Um, but then Emily will be talking more about those areas. And yes, we do teach uh, across seven academic areas and we do have um, four metro campuses as well. With that, let me just talk a little bit about the student satisfaction and student support that we have here at UniSA. So we are number one in South Australia um, for student support and for student satisfaction. Um, I'm not going to talk about all the extra services that we offer at the university because today's focus is going to be on our areas of study. Um, therefore, if you do have any questions about accommodation or, or any other extra services that we do offer, please leave your questions in the Q&A section and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions towards the end. With that, I'm actually done with my presentation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hand it over to you, Emily. Thank you, Orakma. Give me a sec to share my screen. Please. Okay. okay, give me one sec. Sorry, I'm not quite used to just having one screen in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm guessing now you can see me sharing my screen? Yes. Okay, okay. thanks, Rama. Okay, uh, good morning. I think it's good morning uh, in Sri Lanka, Maltese, and good morning, everyone. Uh, very lovely to be here today, and welcome for joining us. I'm Emily. I'm the, I am the coordinator for international business development at UniSA Business and Justice and Society. Today, I will take this opportunity to use roughly 20 minutes to introduce you about different programs that we offer at UniSA Business and Justice and Society. So first of all, let's start with business. So this is one of the quickest slide that to show you what we offer, what study areas that we offer at business. You can see that we actually offer a very comprehensive different areas under our business um, academic unit. But more importantly, we are ranked top number one worldwide uh, as a business school. We are double crown accredited, accredited which is AASB accredited, which is the US uh, accreditation, and then is the European Equus accreditation. We are one of the 12 Australian universities who get the both accreditation at the same time. And also we are the oldest university in Australia actually uh, get the Equist accreditation. We are one of the earliest to get the Equist accreditation. 
And as I said, we have a very comprehensive offering. So before I dive in uh, to tell you how spe spectacular our degrees are, so this is a quick slide to show you what undergrad degree and postgrad degree that we offer at UniSA Business. So as you could see, we have uh, from accounting, finance to business, and also from IMBA, Master of Management to MBA at master level. Again, I just want to emphasize we have a very broad range of offering at our under business. Practically whatever you could think of under business, we offer at UniSA Business. So today, I will spend a little bit of time to tell you a few programs uh, that is quite outstanding at UniSA Business and quite popular in our uh, international market as well. So first of all, I'm going to start with Bachelor of Digital, Digital Business. This degree we just launched last year, late last year, which is a brand new design, co-design and co-deliver with one of the leader, Accenture, the global uh, IT consulting company. So the unique point of this degree is we actually offer eight week pay internship with Accenture throughout this degree. And I'm very confident to say that we are the only university in Australia who actually could guarantee offer pay internship to our international students in a business degree. So this is a very good opportunity for international students to learn uh, a professional degree, but as well as to gain uh, experience through one of our partners under this degree. And also we have highlight a few important points for this degree, including the IELTS entry requirements, the A-level and IB entry requirement as well, and as well as the 2024 tuition fee. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free um, to pop up at the Q&A session. The second degree I want to emphasize today is our Bachelor of Business. Uh, if you have remembered a very few a few slides back then, we have a very comprehensive offering under Bachelor of Business. Actually, we offer 16 specializations under Bachelor of Business, which means you could actually choose whatever you would love to study under the Bachelor of Business degree. And also, more than that, you could have a mix of different minors as well. So which is uh, a, a very good three year degree to provide uh, with our student to choose different study area under the business uh, degree. Also, it's a three year undergrad degree. Uh, fee wise is a bit it's a bit more cheaper compared to our digital business and the IELTS is also a bit lower. Uh, a level and IB entry requirements are very similar. A very good offering at UniSA Business is we do offer a fast track to masters. I know this looks like a lot of information on this slide. However, if you would love to know more, we actually have a dedicated website to tell you how to um, choose a three plus one bachelor and master's degree, which means you could uh, only use four years to complete a bachelor degree as well as a master's degree at UniSA. This is a very unique offering that we do um, at business. And very quickly, I'm going to introduce two of our very important and popular master's degree at business. One is the Master of Professional Accounting. Accounting, we are uh, accredited by CPA Australia and also CA and also the maximum exemptions towards ACCA as well. Uh, we are actually, we also have um, the tax clinic, which is uh, also a very good location for our accounting students to actually do some placement uh, in our tax clinic, which offer on campus. So for the Master of Professional Accounting, it's a two-year master's degree. At Uni, yeah, at Uni SA Business, most of our master's degrees are two years, uh, besides the MBA and Master of Management. Um, they are one and a half years um, master's degree. And also, um, you can see the IELTS entry requirement as well as the 24, uh, 2024 fee underneath that as well. The last but not least, uh, the business degree that I would like to mention today is our international um, MBA, we call it IMBA in short. So at UniSA, we offer two different MBAs. One is the international MBA, the other one is the MBA. So why would you choose international MBA is because, first of all, we don't require any uh, work experience for the IMBA. And also, we don't have any background uh, requirements from your undergrad degree. So you could study IT or you could study science and you could still apply for our IMBA degree. 
is also a two-year degree which offers six different specializations, uh, which you could uh, find that on the left corner of the slide, uh, including advertising and brand management business analytics, which is very popular as well in recent years, finance, human resource management, marketing and tourism and event management. So again, you can see it's a very comprehensive offering that we do under the IMBA degree. Okay, moving on to the next academic unit that I represent today, which is Justice and Society. So at Justice and Society, we offer uh, different study areas as well, including aging and disability, art, human services, law, psychology, social science, and social work. Today, because of time limit, I won't be able to mention every single one of them, but I will be able to talk to you about uh, social work, human services, and psychology. Of course, very importantly, we also offer law degree, but again, because of time limits today, we don't, uh, we won't talk too much about uh, the law degrees. However, if you have any further questions, feel free um, to ask in the FAQ session. So first of all, Bachelor of Social Work. Social work actually is a very popular study area of degrees that we offer at UniSA to all our international students. We offer Bachelor of Social Work as well as Master of Social Work. So one of the very important factors is that we both the bachelors and the masters are accredited by AASW, the Australian Association of Social Work Worker, which means it includes a thousand hour work placement embedded in the degree. So the mo <clears throat> excuse me. So for this a thousand hour placement, we actually divide it into two five hundred hour placements, and it would be guaranteed placements which offer uh, through us. So you don't have to find your own placement organizations. Uh, so for that, for Bachelor of Social Work, it's actually a four year bachelor's degree, unlike most other degrees, uh, mostly are three years. But for Bachelor of Social Work, it's a four year bachelor degree. And the IELTS requirement, according to the accreditation requirements, it's uh, relatively higher. So it's require IELTS 7 and each bank 7 as well as entry. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, for A, B and for IB and A level, it's pretty similar as what we've mentioned earlier uh, for the business degrees. Uh, if you wonder, OK, it's a four year degree, it requires IL7. What if I don't have the IL7? Um, is there any alternative that we we could study the similar degree as a Bachelor of Social Work? At UniSA, we actually offer another degree, which is Bachelor of Social Science in human services, which is relatively uh, job outcome wise, is quite similar compared to Bachelor of Social Work. Uh, this degree is accredited by ACWA, the Australian Community Workers Association. So also through this degree, we offer 560 hours placement. Also, we divide it into two placements. Each placement is 280 hours. So if you are looking for um, a future job outcome uh, for skill assessment, this would actually be eligible uh, for the future job outcome and the skill assessment as well. And also, if you do want to study uh, the Bachelor of Social Work, actually there is a pathway that you could transfer from Bachelor of Social Science to Bachelor of Social Work, which I will mention about in, in a bit later. So as for the uh, entry requirement, as you could see, Bachelor of Social Science in Human Services is a three year undergrad degree and IELTS requirement is also uh, just IELTS 6, which is why I mentioned if you want to study something similar, but you can't get to the IELTS that point, or maybe you just haven't decided whether you want to spend four years doing a, master, a bachelor degree, you could actually apply for the Bachelor of Social Science first. However, if you think, OK, I, what I really want to do is Bachelor of Social Work. Uh, I want to study with Bachelor of Social Science in Human Services first, but can I transfer later? The answer is yes. So practically for the first and the second year, uh, the course structure is very similar for these two degrees. So for our students, um, after you finish the first three semester, it's actually possible to transfer from Bachelor of Social Science uh, in Human Services to Bachelor of Social Work. So there are a few uh, requirements here which I have listed. So first of all, you have to apply to transfer. And second of all, you have to maintain a GPA, which is 4.0, which is pass in all courses. And then you do need to provide the IELTS 7 to meet the social work entry requirement. 
However, we believe this way, uh, it, it actually gives you one year buffer because with IL 6.0, you can study um, the social science. While you are studying the social science, you could prepare for the IELTS or the PTE. And in a year's time, if you could achieve uh, seven, great, you could transfer to Bachelor of Social Work. However, if you can't achieve uh, IELTS 7, you could continue your study of Bachelor of Social Science and then apply to Master of Social Work after you finish um, your bachelor studies. Why uh, would we want to recommend students to apply social work um, in UniSA? Of course, very importantly, it's a very good uh, job outcome and it's very high demand in the job market as well. So here is just some uh, statistics that uh, we would like to share with you guys today. So you could see that uh, it's a very in uh, it's very high demand in for social and welfare professionals in Australia, and projected to increase by. 39,300 by May 2024. So in short, it's a very demanding area. So it's very easy to get a job after you graduate, no matter in social science and human services or in social work. The next one I'm going to talk about is the Master of Social Work. Um, I am hope that um, with the audience today, there will be some doing the bachelor's degree. So if you would like to apply for our Master of Social Work, again, we are AASW accredited, offer a hundred, a thousand hours placement, which divided into two 500 hours uh, placement. It's a two year master's degree. The IELTS requirements are exactly the same for bachelor and master's of social work because of the uh, because of the accreditation, the IL7. However, if you can't meet the um, language um, Elicos, we are uh, offering Elicos as well. Uh, many students, uh, we often be asked, uh, what are the entry requirements besides the GPA and the IELTS? What are the academic background we require for Master of Social Work? Um, we actually have a very specific um, education background for Master of Social Work uh, applicants. So this is a quick shot that you could see which areas would consider to be suitable a related discipline to apply to our Master of Social Work degree. So ideally, if you have a bachelor degree in psychology or sociology or history or any social science related bachelors, um, that we will consider a related discipline. However, if you are not from this related discipline, for example, if you are from education background or any health background, we will look at your transcript to see if we could have eight relevant social and behavior sciences uh, courses in your undergrad degree. So practically, it would be a case by case uh, situation assessment if you are not from a related discipline to apply to our masters uh, of social work. The last but not least today I would like to uh, introduce is our psychology degree, uh, which I know that is getting very popular uh, in Sri Lanka and Maltes as well. So psychology, actually, we have a very comprehensive offering at undergrad level to our international students. Uh, one, that's why this is a slide to show you that we offer three year uh, degrees and as well as four year degrees. The difference between three year degrees and the four year degrees uh, in short is that if you want to be a registered psychologist, you have to do a four year honours degree in order to proceed further, which I will introduce in a bit. Also, in psychology, we are very outstanding. We are number one in Australia for work ready graduate in psychology. Again, which prove we are career ready and job ready. So today I'm going to introduce you the two honours degree, which I've mentioned in the earlier slide. One is the Bachelor of Psychology in Honours. The other one is Bachelor of Psychology Honours in Con Cognitive Neuroscience. So why, um, so why would you like to study um, the psychology in UniSA? The very important thing is we are accredited by Australian uh, Psychology Accreditation Council, in short, the APAC which would give you the opportunity to continue your further study into a master clinical psychology degree if you want to be a registered psychologist. So which is why this is a four year undergrad degree. Uh, IELTS requirement, you could see that the entry requirements um, for the A level and the IB is much higher than the previous program that I introduced because it's an honours degree. 
And the second one I want to introduce today is the cognitive, uh, the cognitive neuroscience. So the difference between uh, just the psychology degree and the cognitive neuroscience is the neuroscience is more focusing on how um, the brain cell um, connecting to each other and impacting the behavior through a psychology level. So it's, it's slightly different uh, in its own way. So it's really up to you to decide which one is uh, more you're interested in. Is it general psychology or more focusing in the neuroscience part and the behavioral part is very different. Also, again, the four-year degree, entry requirements slightly lower than the previous honors degree, but very similar uh, for the A-level and IB requirements. Forget to mention, uh, actually, the two academic units, we are located in different campuses. For business, we locate in the CBD of Adelaide, which is our City West campus. So for the psychology, the social work is lo located in the McGill campus. So from McGill campus to the city, it's roughly a 20 minutes by bus. So it's not too far. So. I have mentioned, I keep mentioning, if you want to become a registered psychologist, you have to do a four year bachelor um, in of psychology honors degree. And this is the path that I want to use this opportunity as well to show you quickly how you could achieve that. Again, sadly for now at UniSA, we only offer four year psychology honors degree to our international students, but not the master of psychology at the clinical level. However, if you want to be a registered psychologist, you have in Australia, you have to first uh, complete it with a very good GPA to uh, for a four year Bachelor of Psychology honors degree and then apply for a two year Masters of Psychology in clinical. After that, you are into um, the path of being part of the Australian Psychology Society to be a registered psychologist. So this is a long process. If you are aiming to be a registered psychology, a psychologist, however, it is completely doable. Uh, at UniSA, we will provide you a very solid background for your very first step. OK, this is my part. Uh, and then I'm going to pass over back to Rachma to talk about scholarship. Yes, thank you so much, Emily. Very, very comprehensive. So I think everyone's now understood about our business programs, about our social work programs and our psychology programs. Um, now, all of these programs, yes, they are eligible for scholarships, just like Emily mentioned. Now, let me just quickly start sharing my screen. I'll quickly go on to the and I think you can see the presenter view. So let me just quickly change that. Emily, do you can you confirm if you can see the full view for me? Perfect. Yes, yes perfect. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So yes, at UniSA, we do have two scholarships, two main scholarships that are available for both Sri Lankan and Maldivian students. And all the programs that Emily spoke about today are eligible for this scholarship. So the first one is what we call the IMS or the International Merit Scholarship. This is a 15 percent scholarship for the full duration of your course. You will be automatically considered for this program if you are eligible. So basically, we've given the eligibility criteria on the screen as well. If you're applying for a bachelor's program, you need to have a nine. That will be a minimum of three C passes in your A levels. Um, and if you're applying for any of our master's qualifications, you will need to have at least a 60 percent in your bachelor's degree or that can be a second upper as well. Um, if you want that on a four point scale, that will roughly be a three point three on a four point scale. Because I know in Sri Lanka, there are a lot of degrees that uh, issue uh, a GPA out of a four. Now, that's for our International Merit Scholarship. And the other scholarship is our, just a minute, let me move on to the next one. OK, there you go. That is the VC scholarship. That's what we call it. But actually, the longer version is Vice Chancellor's International Excellence Scholarship. This is a 50 percent scholarship, again, for the full duration of your course. Um, one thing to remember, though, if 
you are eligible for this, you need to submit a separate application to be considered. We only have 20 scholarships available annually, and so it's a very competitive scholarship. So if you're applying for a bachelor's degree at UniSA, you'll need at least a 16 in your A-levels, or you'll need between more than, I would say, an 80% um, in your bachelor's to get into a master's with this scholarship. Um, like I said, it's a very competitive scholarship. Oh, and for both the scholarships, one thing to remember is you need to maintain your GPA. So for the previous scholarship, which is 15%, you need to maintain your GPA at 4.5 out of a 7 in order to make sure it continues. And for the VC scholarship, you need to maintain your GPA at 5 over a 7 in order to make sure it continues. So those are the two scholarships that we mainly have at UniSA. Now, if you do need any additional information about UniSA or if you want to talk to any of our current students, please take a picture of this slide or you can scan this QR code. And this will take you to our student ambassador page and you will be able to ask them any questions. You'll be able to basically discuss anything you want. Um, we do list our student profiles on the website as well, so you can see where they're coming from, what they're studying, and you can pick a profile that matches yours best. And with that, I'm done with the presentation for the day. And this is actually the time for q and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see all of us. Right. Do we have any questions for today, Delaney? Yeah, anyone who joined late, uh, who couldn't actually um, uh, join for the business uh, webinar? Any questions? Yeah, I have a question for Emily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With regard to business studies, like uh, what are the industry connections that you all have um, for students, like when it comes to internships and everything like um, will you be able to talk a little bit more about that, Emily? Yes, absolutely. Very good questions. Because of time limit, I didn't spend too much time talking about that, but normally we absolutely emphasize about that. One of the big advantage studying a business at UniSA is that we practically offer internship through all our degrees. It's through uh, electives, so we don't require all students to do an internship. However, as long as our students who want to do an internship, they could always choose that under the electives. So we offer our internship through our electives. And more importantly, we have actually for UniSA, we have 2,500 partners uh, across the globe regarding research, partnerships and internship opportunity, etc. UniSA, we are very particularly in business. We are very emphasized to support our students to find internship and jobs. So we actually organize two networking opportunities every year just for our business student to meet with our uh, partners that who would like to accept international students or domestic students as an internship. So through one morning, it's just one morning event, the students could talk to more than 100 different uh, partners at the same in, in one morning. Of course, they need to select which area they would like to focus on and then to pairing up with which internship partner that they would like to achieve or, 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 or do the internship with. So we, we do have a very good networking opportunity for all our students. And also, if the students accidentally miss out these networking opportunities, they could always reach out to our um, executive um, internship career team at business as well. Our team would have the opportunity to have the meeting with the student to see what kind of um, interest that they have, what kind of companies that they do want to do the um, placement, and then to link them up together. So in short, if students want internship, there are plenty of opportunities that we offer at UniSA Business. Thank you, Emily. When it comes to job prospects in future, like on once you graduate, especially when it comes to business studies or major in accounting or the majors yeah. that you all offer. Uh, what is the future for students like in Australia when students definitely when they choose a program, they want to get what the best return on their investment for education. So what is your advice to them? Right. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, the big advice that I always gave is definitely 
participate in networking and do the internship and cherish these moments that where you are studying all the opportunity that the uni as they we offer our students. It's not just that. I want to share uh, one very quick example um, to the audience today. Our teachers, our professors and, and lecturers, they are not just telling or teaching our students prof to professional knowledge. They are also very keen on helping our students get jobs. So during the COVID times, since you've asked about accounting, coincidentally, so during the COVID time at the end of 2021, so there were there were 10 international students um, that one of our academic under accounting is helping them to uh, preparing them for the interviews. So through her own personal network, she knows some HR from Deloitte Adelaide. So she asked this friend of hers to do a mock interview with these 10 international students who are graduating in the end of 2021 to do a mock interview. So the whole, the whole idea of that is just a mock interview to provide them some feedback, what you could do better in a job interview and how you could improve your CV, your presentation skills and things like that. However, our students are just outstanding. So at the end of the day, out of the 10 students, six of them actually got the offer from Deloitte after the mock interview which is completely unexpected. And of course, all of them choose to join Deloitte at the end of the day. So I just want to use this example to share that it's not just we offer different opportunities through different networking opportunities. Our academic at our UniSA business, they also are very keen to using their personal connections to help students to prepare their job outcome and eventually just land jobs. And post COVID, very interestingly, it's very high demand in the job market right now in Australia and particularly in Adelaide. You could see that every company is hiring people. There are so many opportunities right now in Adelaide. It's really good timing. Thank you so much, Emily, for the detailed explanation. It, yeah, it really will help students to decide on like whether to proceed with this program or not. Like, some have a little bit of doubt when it comes to demand in Australian skills. Like, so it's a very good opportunity. Actually, it depends on what my advice is. It's, it's always better to study the area that you really want to do or excel in. That really matters. So, yeah. So if there are no questions, uh, any more questions? No. <laughs> OK, then thank you so much, Emily and Rahama, for joining today. Um, and thank you, everyone. You all can always contact us on not double seven one seven seven zero three six one. Contact it locate so that we will be able to give you and guide you details with regard to application process to UNISA for future intakes. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Dilani. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Bye.